Hello viewers, and you have found Rob Blog. Vlogging uh, since, uh, well, early December, or on December the 4th, but I've actually had this YouTube channel for quite a few years, because when I had a, a, a theater company along with my hubby, um, I would post some videos of the theater shows on there too. And I think if you look down far enough, you'll find uh, videos of two shows that we did many years ago. By many, I don't mean 10, but more than five years ago. So uh, yeah, so this YouTube channel has been around, I think since 2015, but only I started recording vlogs like this one in earnest uh, back in the first week of December. So thank you for uh, joining me. A little bit of unexpected background there. I didn't even know I was going to talk about that, but I just did. So welcome to my uh, Rob blog and uh, still thinking about changing the name uh, to uh, Vancouver Island blog or Island boy a blog. I don't know. I'm, I'm still thinking about it. But for now, it's still Rob Blog. So thank you again for tuning in and watching. Um, I want to uh, do a little bit of a commemorative moment or two here. Um, now, wh whether you know or not, we used to live in Ontario almost four and a half years ago. And we lived in a little city uh, north of Toronto called Aurelia, Ontario, on two lakes, Lake Simcoe and Lake Kuchiching. And every now and then I go back and read the local paper online. And the other thing I do uh, is look at the obits because people that you knew for years uh, can pass away and you really don't know it if you don't have that connection in the community still. So this morning when I, uh, when I looked at Aurelia Matters, which is the local paper online, um, I was a little bit saddened to hear that Michael Jones had passed away. The Michael Jones lived right around the corner uh, from us, he and his wife, uh, uh, Judy Archer. And Michael was a musician extraordinaire. In fact, if you Google Michael Jones, maybe put Aurelia in there, he was a maestro at the piano, and he recorded actually in his home. Uh, but Michael also got involved locally in Aurelia in cultural committees. And uh, I went to many of these meetings, sort of involved in the, uh, the cultural um, fabric that was the city of Aurelia and, and still is. So Michael will be missed. He passed away back uh, a week or so ago. And I just wanted to mention his name, Michael Jones. And uh, so I have. And someone else that uh, helped out our theater company a lot was a lovely lady that passed away was Judy Cook. Uh, Judy was one of the uh, the, the big members, the, uh, I don't know whether she was the president or not, possibly, of the Thai Club in Aurelia, which was a seniors club. And uh, Judy allowed our theater company to use the space at the Thai Club for next to nothing. It was like, I don't know, $25 for a few hours if we were going there to read a show or put to get together a show or rehearse a new show. Uh, we often used the Thai Club. And we also went to many of the Thursday loony lunches that the Thai Club put on. It was all for a buck, and it was a good a good lunch. Uh, you had to be a senior to do it, or over 60, I should say. And, um, yeah, we used to go there, and uh, then there was little draws that were made that you could buy tickets for and whatnot. It was just a nice little loony lunch that happened every Thursday or every second Thursday. But we used to go and used to uh, meet a few friends there who were also seniors. Now that I'm a real senior, um, it seems so long ago, but Judy Cook, I just wanted to mention your name because she was, her and her husband, Don, were wonderful. They trusted us with the keys to the building, and uh, they wouldn't have to come back if we were there till 11 o'clock at night to lock up. We would lock up and make sure things were done properly for them. So anyways, uh, I just would like to, a little bit of an in memoriam for those two folks today, Michael Jones and Judy Cook. So, elsewhere, what's going on today on the island? Well, we're into February now, right? This short month of February, and uh, I know back in Ontario, you've got a little bit of snow happening again in the next couple of days, and it's actually in our forecast for a couple of centimeters here on the island as well. So, um, the temperature is supposed to rise rather quickly, and you know, I think weather forecasting here on the island is not an easy thing to do because of all the mini climates. And here we are in a, in the Cowichan, which is a warm land. And we have this mini climate here, which is like a Mediterranean climate. So it depends the higher you are above sea level, whether or not you're going to get any snow and what the weather is like. So it's very difficult to uh, forecast the weather in some areas of the island, and this can change quickly. All of a sudden, yeah, from going for the weather forecast where you may have had a shower or sunshine, 
all of a sudden you get a warning from Environment Canada, the potential for snow. And it's kind of funny because in Ontario, what does it take? 15, 20 centimeters that they warn you that it's going to be snow. Here, if a couple of centimeters may happen in our area of the island, they warn us because islanders are no good in the snow viewers no good in the in the snow as a matter of fact i think i've said this before the only people that drive in snow on the island are former ontarians so that's what what the weather forecast is supposed to bring we'll have to see what happens so we were out shopping today and you know uh, some of the shelves are bare and i know i have mentioned this before but uh, there are a few bare shelves here and there today but prices are going up now uh, I don't eat beef or pork anymore, but I have to look at the beef prices and, oh my gosh, they were up a long ways. So I am buying plant-based minced fake beef, plant-based beef and whatnot. But even the price of that for 450 for some grams, it costs you $8 and so much. And people are really looking at prices and you can just see people going, oh, what are we going to eat? What are we going to have tonight or the or the rest of the week? And you could just tell by the body language and the way they were comparing and looking at prices. And, you know, it's it's a shame, isn't it? Whether COVID has driven this up uh, or the fact it's been tougher to get products out there because of the weather and COVID. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But uh, it's not that we're running low, that there isn't anything to eat. It's just that some of the stuff that's there is expensive. And if you're trying to eat on a budget, you know, I mean, if you win $44 million, then I guess you can buy whatever you want. If I won 44 million viewers, I would never cook it or shop again, not at the food store. Someone else would, would, would be paid a very good salary to do that for me. Because, you know, with that much money, I, I hate worrying about what are we going to eat tonight or on Friday night or on the weekend or next week? What are we going to do? It takes up a lot of time thinking about planning a meal, doesn't it? And um, yeah, it would just be much easier though if the prices were a little bit lower at this point. But uh, it was funny today, well, funny, sad, people going, oh, looking at a box of something frozen, going, well, do I get this one? Do I get the cheap one? Do I just not bother and just eat? My mother used to say bread and point. What are we having for dinner tonight, Mom? It's bread and point. I can't even remember what point it was now, but it was something. Anyways, best of luck when you're out there shopping for food to feed yourself or your families or your loved ones. I don't know, bit of a challenge. It's a bit of a challenge. Well, viewers, that's all we've got for today. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate the views. Take care of yourselves. Love and joy be all around in two, ought, two, two. And we'll see you next time right here on this fabulous Rob blog. Bye for now.